and I may have mentioned this in other lessons, but I wanted to make sure you knew about um, expanding objects. So right now, if I highlight this, you will see the three different ellipses we originally had. We have this outer one, the inner one, and the middle one. And But we can't really individually edit the in-between steps that we created with the blend tool. So if I get the direct selection tool, I can only select the three original circles. Let's say I'm ready and I feel like this is finished. I don't want to change it anymore, but I want to be able to have access to all of the vector points that are in the in-between steps. You can go up to Object and Expand it. So Object, Expand, and you're going to be able to expand it. Go ahead and leave it on Fill and Stroke and click on OK. And it's going to expand it and it's going to go ahead and make it live vector shapes. I can now right click and ungroup it. And now I have access to all of those in between steps. I can take this out and I have access to them. I just wanted to make sure you guys knew um, how to gain access to all those individual steps whenever you use the blend tool and that's to go to object and expand. And what's really interesting is you can do this with any shape. Any shape you can blend together and morph together. And this even includes the type tool. So let's move this off to the side and let's get the type tool. So let's zoom in. Let's get the type tool and just do a simple A. Let's make sure we're white or white on black. And so to use, and let's get a thicker typeface or weight. So right now this is Myriad Pro. We can just do a very quick Helvetica. You don't have to use Helvetica, but whatever you feel comfortable with. Just going to do a bold weight so we can really see the strokes. All right, so here we are. We have the letter A. We can make this a outline if we want so we can really see how things work here or how, how things are blended together. So there's a simple A. And I'm going to make this a different color. So let's say I want to make this kind of an orange color. And I want to make a duplicate, so I'm just going to go up to Copy and Paste in Place, and there is a keyboard shortcut. It'll tell you what it is. Paste in Place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that special trick where I can scale it down to the center point. So I'm going to hold down Shift so I can scale dimensionally, but I'm also going to hold down Shift and Option, and it's going to be able to bring it right into the center point. So I'm just going to bring it down to the center point, maybe right about here. Make a, any adjustments I want to make. And I'm going to select both of these objects. I'm going to go up to Object, Blend, and Make. And it's going to be able to put all the, I think we have 22 steps that are in between the two. And we can make that smaller at any time by going up to Object, Blend, Blend Options, and we can just make it 10. And we can make this a different color in the center, so it can also slowly gradiate the color from orange to blue. And we also want to maybe match the stroke thickness. Let's make sure both strokes are the same. And let's go to Blend and Make. So that looks pretty cool. We can reduce the stroke a little further. And you can do this with any letter, any, any typography. You could do this with words. So let's say I un ungroup this, go back to where we were. And I type in wow. And I make this wow too. I take both of those and blend. And you could probably put even more steps between them or make the size a little bit similar contrast. And let's put some more steps between it. Let's do 22 and make. So really interesting type of art here. So you can see the endless variety of objects and shapes you can create with the blend tool. So let's do a solid shape. Let's do a solid square. And let's do a another solid shape. Let's make this kind of a pinkish color, reddish color. And we're going to hold down Option and Shift and go to my Transform. And be able to make that bigger. Let's do Command Left Brackets and that backwards. And let's see what happens when we do Object, Blend. Let's just make sure we have specific steps on. 
Let's do 22 and let's blend it. What's cool is you can get the direct selection tool, select one of your shapes and get the move tool again and go ahead and hold down option and shift, scale this down and it will automatically kind of adjust that for you. You can also make one a stroke. You can make both of them a stroke. So pretty cool shapes and objects that we can create using the blend tool. We're going to take the blend tool one step further to create something almost 3D like and, and look. And this is what we're going to be creating. It's these little wiggly lines, but we can also create ellipses and circles that have the similar 3D look by using the blend tool. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and move these over to the side and we're going to get two circles. So I'm going to first start out with one simple color. So this is a gradient. This is a simple gradient. Let, let me get my gradient panel out here so you can see what gradient. It's a very simple gradient, kind of a warm color to a cooler color. And that's all it is. It's a simple gradient and it's a circle. What we're going to do is we're going to blend two circles together. So we're going to take one, we're going to hold down option and drag all the way out here. So now we have two copies. We're going to select both of these and do the blend tool to blend one solid line. So we're going to go up to object and we're going to set our blend tool, go to blend options. We're going to set it to a big amount. So we're going to do, let's try 800. I believe the highest it goes is a thousand. I believe we'll do 800, click on okay. And it could be 900, just a very high amount. We're going to go to object and now we're going to blend it. So we're going to make, and it created 800 different shapes all between there. And it makes this interesting looking kind of line. And what's really neat about this is we can create a stroke. So let's say we want to create a wavy line. So I'm just have the pen tool holding down shift clicking. I'm going to take the curvature tool and just kind of make a wiggly line and let's make sure it's on stroke. Just making a wiggly line. That's all I'm doing. Just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Just a wiggly line. So I'm going to make this, let's just make this white so you can kind of see what's happening and increase the stroke. So we're going to adapt this color and we're going to put it on this wiggly line. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. Let's make that smaller. We're going to select this object that we did the blend tool with. We are also going to select the wiggly shape. We're going to go to object, blend, and we're going to go to replace spine. So it's going to take this gradient that we created and it's going to adapt it to the spine. It's going to replace the stroke of the wiggly line. So replace spine and all of a sudden it, it replaces the regular white stroke and now it took that other 3D object and put it on here. But since it's a gradient, we had two different colors. It almost looks like highlights and shadows. So you have your highlights of the orange and your shadows of the purple. You can select this, it's just like any stroke now. And we have the two circles. These are the two circles that we had before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the direct selection tool, click off, and I'm gonna just select this one circle and I can change the gradient right over here on the fly. So let's say I don't want it to be orange. Let's say I want it to be blue. So now you have blue and you could put more contrast here. Let's do the other side. We could do blue, maybe take the middle gradient away. And so you kind of have this, these cooler colors form into warmer colors. You could do the direct selection tool on this side take that middle one off and let's do a brighter orange. And we can go on the other side and you can create all sorts of combinations of colors. What really helps is to have contrast between the two colors you pick on your gradient. So it emulates the shadows and highlights of a 3d object. This is not a 3d object, but it appears 3d. And what's incredibly neat about this is now that we have this object, I can take the direct selection tool and I can take any point of the stroke and manipulate it. 
And if you overlap, so let's say I take a point and I kind of have this overlapped, it'll almost take on that 3D appearance because it puts this portion over to the right on top. So you can see some really neat stuff you can do with this. And you can manipulate any of the points to give it that 3D kind of look. So you probably have seen this a lot. Um, it's a really popular look. You've seen this on um, different projects, but you've probably also seen it done with typography and letters. So this is how you would do it with letters.